Noctua NH-U12S Chromax Black. This is the CPU cooler that I will be showing you how to install on the AM4 socket in today's video. There will be timestamps in the description below. Certain part of the video like them too, you're more than welcome to do so. Some other links down there that may interest you. Don't get the all that fun YouTube stuff on your way down that description box. But without wasting a lot of your time, let's flip you over here and we'll get this AM4 installation guide started. And to be able to get started with this procedure, we got everything laid out here that we need. We have the air cooler here with the fan attached to it. We have the four screws and the eight different standoffs here, or spacers, which we will only be using one set of these, which I'll show you which one is which when we get into it. We have our thermal paste. We have our two brackets that's designed for the AM4 socket, AM3, FM2, all the sockets that AMD will fit. Do have the low noise adapter cable here, which we won't be using that, but you may be interested in using that. As far as the tools that we're going to need for this process, we have a regular number two magnetized tip screwdriver here. I also have a six inch extension bit that's magnetized. If you don't have an extension bit or a longer number two Phillips, you could use the one that comes in the package. Me personally, because I work on computers all the time, I have my own that I'm planning on using. And this is optional. This here is a spatula or a spreader with the thermal paste, which is different schools of thought on that, which we'll get into that when we get to that step. But I do spread mine out, so I do have that laid out here as the necessary tools. Your opinion may vary on this. Let me get this clear out of the way. We'll get the motherboard over, get it prepped, and I'll show you how to get this thing installed. This is going to vary a little bit. This is set up as if it's a new build. If you've already got an air cooler on there, you need to take the air cooler off that you've already got on there, which is just the reverse step of the way you installed it this is as a new build so we will have to remove these two little plastic brackets here and that's pretty simple to do take your number two screw screwdriver here take these brackets off just take the loosen up the screws here take the screws out and the brackets lift up off i would recommend holding one of these in a nice safe area i recommend putting all your spare parts in the motherboard box that's usually a pretty good spot to keep them that way if you ever upgrade your cooling in the future and the air cooler or the all-in-one that you get takes advantage of these brackets, you can know where they're at and you have easy access to them. That's pretty simple, huh? Not too bad. Next thing we want to do, now since it's easy to get to, we're going to go ahead and add our thermal paste to it. And I'm going to use what they include, which is the Noctua branded thermal paste is what I'm going to be using. I have a feeling a lot of you at home don't have thermal paste laying around, so you'll have to use what they provide for you and you just try to piece size drop here in the middle i like that actually looks to be a little much but that's why i like to spread mine out there's different schools of thought on this some people says put the piece size drop in the middle let the heat spreader do the work by spreading it out me personally i'm old school i spread mine out i just take my little spreader and spread it out a couple of reasons why i do this number one i spread it out make sure i have a nice thin coat over the whole cpu it is coated nicely and also like in this situation if i get too much put on i can take the excess off so let me get this spread out here and i'll be back all right guys i think that'll do it it's a pretty nice little thin coat of thermal paste on there and yes there's a few spots in there but the thermal paste will spread out once it heats up so i'm not too worried about it all right guys now with the thermal paste installed there we'll go ahead and get the two little brackets here screwed down so we'll get them laid out here where we need them. All right, guys, in the bag, we do have the little gray spacers, and we have little white spacers. For the AM4 socket, we're going to need these gray ones. The white ones is for any other AM, AMD application, if you're using AM3, FM2, FM1, whatever. But for AM4, we need the little gray ones. So we're going to pull them out. You got four of them sitting here. And you also need these four screws that comes in the same bag. These will go down through the plate and through the spacer and into the motherboard. Okay, and talking about these brackets, you see here on each end of them, there's two different holes that you could use or like a little slip, but they're pretty well little holes. And for AM4 socket, by matching up the holes here, you're gonna need the inner ones. Take the little gray spacers here, set them over top of the included back plate for AM4, which is nice as it does does utilize the back plate that comes with the motherboard. Line them up here. And when you put the brackets on, you need one facing the back of the motherboard and the other one facing towards the RAM slots. We'll get this one here started here with a few cranks. There we go. 
Uh, them are nice long screws, I tell you. They give you a lot of slack in them. You don't want to tighten that one up. Just in case you need to move this one around a little bit to get it lined up, you want a little bit of play in it. Get this one here lined up. And since the other one's already started, we'll go ahead and snug this one down. You don't need these real tight. You ain't sealing against water or air or anything. My best my best judgment is about wrist tight with a regular size screwdriver. About the about the best that you need. You don't need extremely tight. There we go. That's one bracket on. And then you just do the other bracket the exact same way. I'll be right back once I get the second bracket put on for you. All right, now since we got the brackets on, we got the heat sink over here. You will need to pull the fan off. That way you can get to this screw right here to be able to tighten it down. They pull the little metal clips off the side of the fan. Pull the fan off. You have this little plastic plastic piece here. You need to remove this plastic piece. If you don't remember that plastic piece, your CP will definitely overheat. And this one here would be kind of hard to leave that on. Then you can kind of pretty well do this in either, either way. Set down on top of your CPU, just like so. Line up your screw. Line up your other screw. I do have my extension bit here already installed on the screwdriver, which if you don't have an extension bit like I mentioned earlier, you could always use the included long screwdriver. And we're gonna go ahead and tighten this one down just a, just a couple twists just to get it started on that screw. Let me see if I can get you a picture of this. Then we're gonna turn this one a few times. There we go. Just a few cranks. Then you want to alternate back and forth between the two screws until you get them snug down. Them spring-loaded screws, so they shouldn't over-tighten on you. But you do want to keep try to keep even pressure on it. You don't want to tighten down one side before you get the other side tightened down. And again, just like the other four screws, you just want it about wrist tight with the screwdriver. You don't need extreme pressure on it. You don't want extreme pressure on it. You put too much pressure on it, you can actually stop the computer from booting. That one there bottomed out. And they should bottom out with the tension that you need. That's why them springs is on there, to keep the tension on it. That's pretty, pretty good. Okay, now with that, with that done, pull your fan back over here. You put the fan back on the same way it came off. I really don't like that cable being on that corner of the fan. We're going to rotate the fan here on this one because uh, I want to try to keep my cable as close as I can to the CPU fan header here. I'm going to rotate the fan in this orientation. I'm going to put the little clips back on it. And them do fit pretty snug, I do have to admit. Now you line your fan up and you clip it on. I'm trying to get you guys a view of this. This side over here is the same way. Get your clips put in them holes. Then you pull it back and just clip it into the side of the heat sink there, just like so. You have a decent cable here, which is a four pin PMW fan header. Depending on your motherboard, your location may vary. But mine's right here is a little gray one. It says CPU above it. And if you look at the connector itself, you got the little notches right here on the very top. And you have a little piece of plastic sticking up from the connector on the motherboard. You line up them notches and you push them down over. You can always take that cable and kind of put a zip tie on it, kind of snug it back someplace or maybe put it here around the front of it, up underneath over here like this. Something to make it look a little bit nicer. There we go. I think it looks pretty nice with the cable put back in there like that. Can't really see it besides just one little bit here. And as you can tell, with this cooler, you can tell you don't have to worry about your RAM slots. You've got plenty of room here for your RAM to fit down in front of the fan, which is pretty nice. That's going to pretty well do it for the installation of it. That's the way you get installed on the motherboard. Let me get reset up here, and I will come up with a conclusion to the video for you. Is it really worth the extra money to buy this over the budget 120 millimeter style tower cooler? Well, to be able to really answer that question, we're going to have to wait till the temperature testing is done on this. It is a very well-built CPU cooler. It is very easy to install. But we gotta wait and see what them temperature tests looks like. If you wanna be notified when that video drops, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell when you're notified when that temperature testing video drops on here on the channel. If you'd like to have a little bit more information on this CPU cooler, there will be links in the description below, along with some other links down there that may interest you. Don't forget the all that fun YouTube stuff on your way out of here. You all have a good day, and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.